Traditions and customs are national treasure. Kazakh people observe traditions over many centuries. The Great Steppe is an amulet of the country. You can watch the customs and traditions of the Kazakhs in the Modern Nomads program. The nomadic culture is a representative of a whole era, a nation and its ways of life. Today we are going to talk about the culture of dishware among nomadic Kazakhs. The way dishware is treated in a culture speaks volumes about the way greater aspects of it. While the variety of vessels have changed with time, the materials used and the instances produced remain unwaveringly stunning throughout the history. Dishes and cookware takes a very special place in every culture, lifestyle and household. That's why we can derive volumes of information about the kind of food, the technology of making, the broader outlook on material objects and generally earthly living from the mere utensils and vessels. To cover the history of kitchenware in the Kazakh culture, we will need to begin as early as the Neolithic period. Excavated during the recent expeditions, the chips of terracotta plates, pots and other utensils dating back to the Stone Age clearly show that humans were capable of processing mud. The geometric shapes casted on the cover of the fragments indicate that dishware was used as the element of decor as well. The houseware in the nomadic cultures molded to the needs of the mobile lifestyle of the shepherds and more often than not was made from animal skins and bones. Not to say that the items made from wood, metal and bronze were unrepresented. However, the most popular material to be used in dish production was clay. The pieces of terracotta pots are found more often than any other kind combined. Obviously, it was more convenient in the nomad settings. All in all, the variety of shapes and sizes on the clay dishware is staggering. Depending on the purpose of the vessel, we were able to find clay pots meant for storing grains, liquid foods and fermented products. The pots that were used to store kumus and butter were found among the remnants of the ancient settlements. Some data suggests that our ancestors believed in life after death. We found clay pots and pans buried together with humans. Notice that even food was included. The remnants of kumus and butter smeared on the fragments of clay pots were found in the burial grounds. Besides these vessels, archaeologists were able to find sacred ritual vessels that contained the elements of the sacrificial food, meant to be consumed by the soul after it departs from the body. The amount and assortment of the dishware left in the ground also denotes the importance of the person leaving this world. Making dishware from clay is an old trade kept alive till today, especially in the south regions of the country where one can find clay masters of all ranks. The Sirdaria region is known for its particularly yielding clay that masters need as if it were dough. They inhale life into the yellow clay and work with it having given up their hearts to the material. The clay is purified and rid of the sands and stones, made plastic and shaped into blobs that go through intense boiling. The masters say that the final product's life will be as long as the raw clay is prepared. The clay that has received its treatment will serve you longer so the process of modeling is left till the very end. The art of clay work had evolved so fast that the whole cities were built from clay and covered with a clay shine. This in turn brought prosperity and spurred the development of civilization. The clay was 
себебі қыш тастырған ол айнала 4-5. Clay duster han, a table that was only a table normally served as a big dish that allowed 5 to 6 people to sit around it. Fruits and vegetables, various finger foods, dried bread, dairy products were served from these tables. With time, the table went out of fashion, and in the middle centuries, together with the clay city's demise, out went the clay dishware. This way, the clayware became the symbol of the past from the tribe who lived in historical times in our lands. If we shall talk about the variety of what was lost, let's consider the clay cups, plates, bowls, water vessels, basins, and dasterhan. In daily life, the most used items were the clay cups and the clay dasterhan. They were huge clay jugs. People were able to keep food there for a long time, and they used to store grains. The clay dishware preserved the food from spoiling and rotting, making the produce last longer. That's why huge clay jugs were made to keep enough food for several months. Culture is the cemented lifestyle of any one group that is formed in a stretched amount of time. This way, the dishware culture among Kazakhs received a major push when the multitude of materials were turned into the materials manifestations of their lifestyle. The leather, torsiks, the clay, kumiras, the wooden, astao, and the iron, kazans. All these are still made nowadays using the ancient technologies. They hope to grasp those simple truths of life that the ancient Kazakhs knew. сақтардың, қондардың, үстіндердің кезеңіндегі қазандар өзінің ошақ несімен тұғырыменен ошағымен бірге жасалған. Яғни қазанның аяқтарды. The cauldrons left by the Saka, Hans, and Uysins were merged with their sands. Inseparable from their legs, the cauldrons stood high above the ground and allowed for more convenient fire setting. The simple improvement to the design of the cauldron is particular to this time period, as well as the animalistic ornaments of the legs. The animalistic style represents the worldview of the tribes and applied to the cauldron carried a very particular meaning. The horned sheep's head supporting the cauldron was very symbolic of abundance and prosperity. Divination to animal spirits and fire was a common theme for various other materialistic elements of the household. <laughs> The requirements to be lightweight, durable and take as less room as possible came out of the mobile lifestyle of the nomads. The dishware was used to withstand the climb across the mountain to walk across the steppe on the side of the camels. The dishes were to fit into each other to be carried in bags with no extra padding to be later unwrapped into a comprehensive dining table. Everything was designed to fit this pattern. The yurt is the main item that complies to this requirement. Its geometry made the house easily foldable and transferable. The kind of dishware our ancestors used was very convenient for the short-term stay lifestyle. The winter dugouts called kuztas, the spring above the ground huts called koktius, the summertime jilos in the fall kuzdius, cast their requirements to the household items. The silico movement from a place to place to feed the animals. Ultimately, the nomad life is controlled by the livestock. The origins of the cauldrons found in the animal breeding cultures are different from those found during the archaeological excavations. The mobile lifestyle forced the nomads to separate the legs in cauldron. 
The three legs were now transported, separated from the cauldron for convenience. Among the iron pots, the archaeologists found a teapot. They say that it was made to be hung on the folding tripod that was popular among travelers. Before that, they only found the types that stood on the ground. Originally brought here by the traveling traders from the east, this type of teapot, called Jer Kuman, can be found in Kazakh households till today. The Persian, Bokharan, Khivan, and Chinese artists have brought their work to the Kazakh steppes in great quantities. The local artists and masters picked up the technique and started making the teapots by order. Some wanted teapots with their tribe stamps on them. I personally saw the teapot ordered by Jitiz Beer in the Errol Local Historical Museum. He made it done with his tribe symbol. Livestock, or the four particular kinds of it, have been setting rules and providing support for the steppe nation. Saddled horses took nomads far, their meat gave important nutrients, and their milk served as healing refreshment every step of the way. Sheep wool provided raw material for threads and blanket fillers. The leather served as a thick, reliable overcoat. Cows and other bigger livestock gave leather that was used to make harnesses and other packing garments. The leather dishware is a special kind of produce. Its presence shows how well the nomads mastered the art of leather processing. The art wasn't present in all civilizations and can be used as a clear sign of the high level of development of the culture. The camel leather, Kumuz vessel called Saba, the goat leather, Ayran vessel called Mez, and other kinds of leather storage bags called Ayakap are a few of the relics of that great culture. The process of making a leather item is complex. The leather vessels were initially used to store liquid foods and refreshments. The most revered Kazakh refreshment, kumuz, is among them. Now, depending on the purpose of the vessel, different types were devised. The biggest, Besbie Saba, could contain as much as 30 liters of kumuz, an approximate amount produced by five horses. Saba had a special place in the yurt, to the right from the entrance, to the left from the tor, the pedestal in the house. Put on Saba Ayak, a three-legged stand, Saba was conveniently available to serving kumus at any time. Before the horse milk becomes kumus, it has to sit in a saba for five days. There's even a special name for this particular kind of kumus, the one that slept for five days. The place of the saba is integral in the tradition of kumus murin dik, the first taste of the season. The idea behind the celebration is to get together and check if everybody made it through the winter, meet the new neighbors, and celebrate the new settlement for the spring season. This holiday is only second to the great Nauru's gatherings. The main attribute of the celebration was the Saba that everybody had to come to have a taste from. The leather dishware can withstand every element, be it the sun, wind, snow, or rain. For example, Torsik was attached to the horse's side or the belt of the traveler and could last decades. For those in the fields looking after the livestock for prolonged periods of time, Torsik gave the comfort of food and water away from home. The organic nature of the raw materials was known to never harm both the food and the people and made the life of the latter healthier, easier and more independent. Dishware made from the natural materials is ecologically safe. Processed and prepared thoroughly, both the wooden and leather dishes were held up to high standards. The wood was only carved and polished after the raw materials were soaked and all potentially harmful substances were removed. Similarly, the leather went through multiple stages of purification before it was passed into household use. First of all, the skin of an animal was to be cleaned from the wool and the remnants of meat. For this purpose, the piece is kept inside of a vessel with highly acidic iron. After this, the piece is kneaded and rolled with rolling pins until it becomes as soft as necessary. For the dishware, the leather pieces were very often smoked profusely before being processed into any shape. It is believed that smoking the leather preserves the food that will be stored in the vessel for way longer than in any other type of leather. The smoke makes the leather impenetrable for air 
and as such prevents bacteria and yeast from developing and spreading. The practice of storing butter in the stomach is well known because it guarantees the safety of the food. The natural materials provide for better experience and health, and that's the important thing to remember. Besides the clay and leather, our ancestors widely used wood as a raw material. Items made from wood, decorated and venerated, can be seen in all regions of the country. The only difference is the type of wood used to produce anything. Only the local types of trees that were in abundance were used for production purposes. For example, in the north, Altai, Alatau that are rich for various types of trees, we can see an equally big variety of dishware. Unlike them, we will only find a few samples of the wooden dishware in the west that is known for its sandy tree unfriendly climate and soil. Whatever samples we can find are made from the endemic types of plants that grow in the salty sandy land. Only one thing is common for all regions. All dishware was made to suit the nomadic lifestyle. Obviously, the wooden items were popular in every household, mainly due to its light weight. The wood doesn't tend to be heavy or fragile, and this makes it more suitable for constant movement. But more importantly, serving the food from the wooden dishware was more convenient. Carved to have hefty handles, the astas big enough to fit in the meat of one sheep, didn't conduct heat into the environment, and prevented people carry the plate from burning and the meat from getting cold before it reaches the table. The fireplace with cauldrons was located far out in the open steppe, and delivering a plate to the table could take some time. There are two types of the big wooden dishes, astas and agash sharas. Astas have a long elliptic shape, while sharas have a circular shape. Sharas were used on a daily basis and serve food to just enough numbers of people, easily allowing for sitting in a circle around it. This tradition of serving food from the wooden astaus has become back, but this time as a homage to the old tradition. The wood processing takes as long as the leather processing. The masters pick the wood that will be turned into dishes with close care. Cut and dried in the shadow, the piece of wood is evened out by a planner. The coal tar, splinters and other imperfections are removed before the master turns that piece of wood into an ornate plate. Some may go as far as decorate the plate with silver ornaments. In the Kazakh language, the dishware is called udiz ayak. The first part, udis, means dishes. The second part, ayak, represents the vessels used to drink liquids. This way, ayak is something we use to call cups and bowls. Drinking tea, kumis or milk from the wooden ayaks was commonplace. The art of making wooden dishware involved a lot of patience. Drying the wooden cuts in the shadow for several years was mandatory to produce a durable product. The fresh cut trunks were never used in production because the final product made from them tended to crack and break easily. Only after several years of drying was any piece taken into production. This weight ensured a long life for the item. <laughs> The techniques applied to the wood strongly depended on the type of wood and the use, purpose of the ready product. Never was the same type of wood used for ayaks and astaus. The vessels for serving kumus were made from the tough species of wood. For the containers of the free-running foods, the softer species were used. The masters of the south are known for making plates and pots from the plants. Gradually this tradition is coming back.
Traditions are not made overnight or even a hundred years. What we have now has accumulated in the course of a thousand years and represents various stages of our development as a nomadic nation, the dishware being the most accessible tangible representation of it.